Are you tired of the rat race? Want to find a rural town to buy a home or maybe rent a place? Today we're looking at great rural towns. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs and a video about country living. If you're a remote worker looking for a place away from the big city or let's say you're retired and just want to retire to the country, this video will show you some places that may fit that bill. With these towns we're looking for that sweet spot, a decent place to live that isn't too close to a major city but not so far away that getting a doctor's appointment or something isn't like a 10 hour adventure just to find out it's not a heart attack, you just have gas. Side note, I had a friend who uh, was having a heart attack. She called 911, got the ambulance ride, everything, and was humiliated when they told her, no, you just have a lot of gas. I still don't think her self-esteem is fully recovered. All right, enough about my gassy friend. If you like this video, give it a like so we know that you want more videos like this one. We found enough great small towns for three or four videos. All right, let's take a look at some great rural towns. Number 10. Watford City, North Dakota. We start off in the great state of North Dakota in a little town on the prairie called Watford, North Dakota. Now, they call it a city. This is a town. Watford only has 6,500 residents and they all enjoy a nice country life. The nearest big city to Watford is Bismarck, about two and a half hours southeast of the town. If you want a quiet life in North Dakota, this is a good option. This is also a place for people that don't mind cold weather. One good thing about cold weather towns, they tend to be a little bit cheaper. Warmer places are expensive normally. Watford is equal to the national average when it comes to housing and cost of living. Crime's really not a thing here. That wasn't always the case. This was an oil boom town a few years back. They had some problems then, but the oil things kind of changed and it's nothing near what it once was. The crime has dropped through the floor. I mean, if you look at their news, that's usually a good indication of what's going on at a place crime-wise and see what's the big headline. Was it a shooting? Was it a robbery? Did someone get a home invasion? No. Their big story here was a high school senior took his 92-year-old great-grandmother to prom because she never went to prom. You gotta love a town like that. Watford, like I'd said, had seen influx in people in the last decade due to the oil boom. They had about 1,700 people in 2010, and now they got 6,500. So they blew up. For a while there, it was over 6,500. Just for a couple years, though. And then when the oil went, all the workers went away, too. This is a nice place to live. The city has a website with all the info about relocating, help you find a real estate agent, resources on getting a mortgage. They also have info about local clubs and employment training. When it comes to buying a home here, Watford's all over the map. I mean, right now they have some older homes that look like they need a little work for around 120 to 150,000. They have a lot of newer homes that are over 400,000. And if you get outside of town where most people looking for rural places to live, you're going to find things that start off around 200,000 and go up to 600,000, but you're going to get some acreage with it. So that's a plus. That's one you want to kind of research Zillow on this one because like I said, they're all over the map. When it comes to internet, yeah, it's not the best. AT&T offers 25 megabytes there, which isn't the best. But since the town is building and stuff like that, I think faster internet will be there pretty soon. Number nine, Wharton, Texas. Wharton is a little town on the Colorado River, about an hour southwest from downtown Houston. Like I said, right on the Colorado River. And yes, there are two Colorado Rivers. This is the smaller one that runs through Austin and works its way down. Then you got the big one that starts off in Colorado, goes through Utah, and then splits Nevada, Arizona, and California before it goes to Mexico. Every time I mention the Colorado River in Texas when I'm talking about Austin or something like that, I get at least one person in the comment section telling me I'm an idiot and I don't know geography because the Colorado River goes nowhere near Texas. There's two. Stop typing. Wharton has decent homes starting off around 150,000 and it goes up. This is a great place if you like warm weather. The downside of this place is there's no jobs. They don't have any. Crime rate's about 14% eh, higher than the national average. When you have a population of under 10,000, a crime rate that's above the national average is easy to pull off because there you don't have a lot of people and it goes by per capita. So in a place like this, if you get some teenagers that decided they're going to start breaking into cars or something like that, they knock off two or three cars. Next thing you know, the city's crime rate is like 20% higher than it should be. The crime rate isn't the best, but it isn't terrible. 
But the employment situation is what makes this place so affordable. I mean, they're losing population. In 2010, they had 8,800 residents, and right now they have 8,600. So that's normally one of the biggest drivers that send people out of a town is employment. So if you're going to move here, you better be retired and have income coming in from that, or you had a good, I don't know, mesothelioma attorney from Houston and did a really great job on your asbestos case. If you're not in one of those situations, you better bring a job with you and be a remote worker. Side note, I know a man that made a truckload of cash because of an asbestos lawsuit. He retired to Texas when he got his structured settlement thing. Uh, nicest guy in the world. He lives not too far from Wharton in Eagle Lake. But Wharton is definitely in that sweet spot. You're just far enough away from Houston to have a nice rural lifestyle and not too far away where if you need to get to a big city, it's right there for you. Number eight, Reevesville, West Virginia. Reevesville is a small place. In 2010, it had a population of about 934 people. 2020, they had a population of 998 people. So they gained 60 people. That's not bad. In the 1900s, it was a very small town with a population of 164 residents, growing to 190 in 1910. This was right before the development of a large-scale coal mining operation in the area. And as you can imagine, that brought in people. In the 1930s, this little town grew to about 1,700 residents. It is has been losing population almost every single census since the 1930s. 2020 was a difference. Now, I've been kind of vocal about retirees and remote workers giving West Virginia a serious look. It's very affordable. It's beautiful. It does get cold and it has great people. Some places might not have the best internet for the remote worker, but Reevesville, West Virginia has Xfinity and their website says 74% of the homes are connected. So that's good. It is cable internet. So, you know, it should be fine for whatever you're doing for a living on the internet. And for the guy who explained to me in detail that he's getting an online business degree in Florida and needs super fast internet, I'm not a big Comcast or Xfinity fan because I used to work there and I hated it, but their internet is fine. 90% of the time. So don't worry about your online business degree from Florida. Reevesville, West Virginia sits on the Mongahela River where it meets Paw Paw Creek. Not even kidding. It is about 30 minutes southwest of Morgantown and about an hour and a half south of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So if you've got big doctor's appointments or you want to see a Steelers game, you're good to go. You can get a livable home here for about $160,000 or less. And they look decent. There's one. The inside is beautiful. It needs a serious paint job, but <laughs> they made the inside beautiful on Zillow. I was like, this is amazing. And you look outside, you're all homeless people live there, right? <laughs> it's just weird. Anyway, they have next to no crime. It's actually 71% lower than the national average. Number seven, Dripping Springs, Texas. Dripping Springs is a nice rural community about 30 minutes west of downtown Austin, Texas. And it's about 20 minutes from Hamilton Pool. This is one of the most picturesque locations in all of Texas. This is a great place to go visit if you ever get a chance. Dripping Springs used to be a very small town. Back in the 2010 census, they only had 1,788 residents. Since then, it has blown up by about 250%. In 2020, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, the population was just below 7,000. Other than the planned communities they have popping up here, most of the houses have a little bit of land between each other. Now, this one isn't the cheapest town on this list, and it is growing, so it might get a little more expensive, but the area around Dripping Springs is great if you could swing a mortgage of about 400 thousand. Now, if you want to get outside of town, that 400,000 will get you about a half an acre at least. This is a very safe town with a crime rate that's 80% below the national average. Dripping Springs has a solid internet. You have AT&T fiber and Spectrum fiber, and apparently the whole city and even some of the outskirts are covered pretty good by one of those two companies. Number six, Whitestown, Indiana. Whitestown is a growing town just outside the Indianapolis metro area to the north. This one is for people that want to live in the country but still want to get a newer home. Not everyone's into buying a farmhouse from the 1930s. Whitestown has had a few new home communities popping up in the last decade or so, and they have some that they're working on right now. The cost of living here is low, crime rate's low as well, 45% below the national average. They have decent internet with AT&T and Spectrum, shows that you can get gig internet here. It also shows that they have Xfinity, and I find that kind of strange. Normally, small towns don't have overlapping cable companies. The population in Whitestown in 2000 was 471 people. In 2010, it was just under 3,000, like I said, and in 2020, they had 10,000 people, so it's growing.
The good news, it's about 30 minutes north of downtown Indianapolis. You're still living in a good rural farming town with new homes. Those new homes, though, it can be a little expensive for this part of the country, but they are new. Plan on spending anywhere from 300000 to, say, 420000 to get a really nice home. Number five, Cave Springs, Arkansas. Cave Springs is a great small town that's just outside the Rogers, Springdale, Fayetteville metro area. Cave Springs is about a 15 mile drive from Fayetteville. This is a great part of Arkansas. It doesn't share some of the other issues that the rest of Arkansas does, like epidemic poverty, dangerous cities, and lonely pig farmers named Ned. This is a great place to live with a crime rate that sits around 85% lower than the national average. Homes here start around 260,000. Usually you get a half an acre at least with that, and they get all the way up to about 450,000. Does look like there's some new construction, a little housing area going on there, so they're really not listing what those are going to go for. Most of Cave Springs is covered by Cox, AT&T, and CenturyLink. This is a great part of the state, too, if you like outdoor activities. Arkansas is never short of that, so that's something to look forward to if you're the outdoor type person. Number four, Thompson Station, Tennessee. Thompson Station, like so many other little weird out-of-the-way cities or towns in the United States, is named after a train depot or the guy who was running the train depot. You'd be surprised how often that happens. And how we get the names for our towns is always a great subject. I live near a place called Aloha, Oregon. Aloha. But I've told this story before. Originally, it was supposed to be Aloha. But the locals here didn't know how to pronounce it. When they saw it on the map, they called it Aloha. This happened back in the 1950s. A local postmaster didn't have a name for this part of the county and they needed a name so he named it after his favorite place to vacation in Wisconsin which was like Aloha Beach or something it was on some lake but anyway this part of Oregon was very rural and filled with country folk back in the day they just didn't know how to pronounce it so we're stuck with Aloha but Thompson Station has had residents since at least the 1700s yeah it's been around a while it's located about 25 miles south of Nashville if this is the type of place you'd ever want to move to, keep an eye on Zillow or Redfin or something like that, because houses don't come up for sale here a lot. There's only one for sale right now in Thompson Station, and it's going for about $275,000. But I'm looking at the history of it. Most of the homes right outside of town usually come with an acre or two, and it seems in the last few years they've sold for $350,000. There is like no crime here. The crime rate is 84% lower than the national average. The only downside here is the houses are a little bit expensive. They have good schools in the area and like any good rural town, when it comes to amenities, they don't have a bunch to do here. So you won't be finding a Costco in Thompson Station. You might be able to find like a Piggly Wiggly or something. And if you're lucky, you'll run into Ned, the lonely pig farmer from Arkansas. When you look at the internet of Thompson Station, it, it's okay. They've got Spectrum there. And the one house that's for sale, I looked it up. You can get Spectrum internet there, which can be up to like one gig. They also offer AT&T in this area. It only gets up to like five Mbps. So that's not good. Definitely look into Spectrum if you do decide to move here. But this is definitely a small town. In 2010, they had a population of just over 2,000 residents. And in 2020, their population was just under 7,000 residents. Number three, Cherokee, Iowa. Cherokee, Iowa is a nice little town about an hour southeast of Sioux City, Iowa. This is like one of those great American towns that have a main street with shops on the side. It also has the Sioux River running outside of town. You gotta love a place where when you look up the local news, it is filled with obituaries, which is sad, but it's not criminal. And a poaching case finally came to an end from 2018. That's all their news. The only real problem here is internet. Internet might be a little bit of an issue. They've got CenturyLink that maxes out at 100 megabytes per second and only about 85% of the town has coverage. So that's kind of depressing. What's not depressing is they have an annual jazz festival, which is held every January, and the Cherokee County Fair and the Cherokee Rodeo are held here every single summer. This is something I'm starting to see pop up in small towns around the United States are local pools that have like splash pads and water slides and things like that. They got that going on here too. You know what else they got going on here? They got a pretty cool prison right outside of town. And when I say pretty cool prison, sure, if you're locked up there, it sucks. But if you look at it from the outside, it is beautiful. Just that old architecture from like the 1910, 1920, 1930, something like that. It's just an amazing building. But if you're not a prisoner and you actually want to move here and buy a house, there aren't many for sale in town. There's some sprinkled throughout the area outside of town that you could find for under 200000 But the one that's for sale in town is only $55,000 
and it's livable. I think it would be safe to say that if you keep your eye on this town, you'll be able to find something for less than 120,000. That's nice. This is a beautiful little town. This is one of my favorite ones on the list so far. And they're losing population. In 2010, they had 5,253 residents. In 2020, the population dropped down to 5,199. So they lost 54 people. That's not terrible, but still. Number two, Jacksonville, Oregon. That's right, Florida, we got our own Jacksonville. We don't need yours. Sure, ours is about 2% the size of your Jacksonville, but we got one. Jacksonville is in Southern Oregon, about a 15 minute drive from Medford, Oregon to the West. You can still see a lot of the old West, you know, gold rush type architecture. Those buildings still stand here. This is a beautiful small town. Jacksonville is growing, not a lot, but it's growing. Back in 2010, they had 2,785 residents. And in 2020, they had 2,898 residents. Like I said, they're gaining some people, not a lot. This one's a little bit expensive. If you wanna buy a home here, it's gonna cost at least 400,000 and it goes up beautiful it's kind of in the mountains forest area hiking trails so you're kind of paying for that their crime rate is about five percent higher than the national average but they have jobs here in the area i should say and they got great schools and plenty of things to do your internet choices here are decent you got spectrum cable and you also have CenturyLink. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There is a link down below. We would love it if you went over and subscribed. All right, on to number one. And number one, Warland, Wyoming. Yes, Wyoming. They have some great places to live, especially if you're looking for something rural. I could have done this whole video on just Wyoming places. They have great places and yeah. Maybe we will. Warland is a great family town. That's about two and a half hours from everywhere. If you want to go to Casper, two and a half hours. Sheridan, two and a half hours. Billings, Montana, two and a half hours. Farmers only hook up, two and a half hours and a bunch of self-esteem. Warland sits on the Bighorn River and is a great place to raise a family, as I said. Low cost living, good schools, affordable housing, and a crime rate so low the mayor of Chicago would probably think you're lying if you told her what it was. The crime rate is actually 97% lower than the national average. That is outstanding. Warland. I was watching one of the little promo videos they have for the place and one thing stuck out. One of the local guys, he said, Warland's the type of place when someone asks you how your day is going, they actually want to know. That says a lot for a town. If you're looking to buy a house in Warland, they start off as low as $99,000, but just to get a normal house, it'll go from $99,000 to maybe $300, you know, $275, something like that. Anything above that, it's usually a little outside of town and it's going to come with some acreage, so that's a plus. Right now, it looks like they're getting ready to build some homes or something, but they have a whole thing laid out where you could buy plots of land for like $50,000 and have them build your house on it. In Warland, you can get one gig internet from Spectrum, which they say they cover about 80.9% of the town. So basically 81% of the town. After that, they also have T-Mobile home internet, which is about 39% of the town has that. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day. Be nice to each other.